have compassion for people in constant pain because there were many times that I literally did want to die. I'm like, if I would just die, it would be so much better. I'd be out of pain. And I thought it all out. I'm like, they would mm -hmm. get the life insurance proceeds. They would be set and I would be out of pain. Right. And I thought that more than a hundred times. I always dreamed of, oh man, when my boys get older, we'll be able to train together and do kettlebells and I can teach them all the tricks of the trade that I've learned and all this stuff. And then to get to that phase in life and to be relatively speaking incapacitated is devastating as a man. And then being, and then literally losing the physical ability to do what I do to make a living. It was a serious challenge. And I can say that I never got depressed about it. I do know that God is in control and he's aware of what we're going through. And he gives us these struggles and challenges to overcome so that he can have the honor and the glory for it. But that doesn't mean that over a hundred times I wanted to die. I left it in God's hand and I'm here. We just jumped in the deep end. I saw Carrie's videos. I watched a bunch of them and I was like, I mean, we have nothing to lose. Sure. Let's try it, you know? So I called my friend who's been carnivore for like a year now. And I said. Hi, everybody. Today we're with TD and Faith. And I thank you guys for joining me today and sharing your carnivore story. So for those of us that don't know TD and Faith, can you guys introduce yourselves and let everybody know a little bit about where you're from and what you do and that sort of thing? So I'm TD. This is my wife, Faith. And we live in Northeast Texas and uh, we're kind of like, um, we're a family of eight and we decided to live like a more slower type of intentional lifestyle. And we've always been like food conscious and health conscious and about, and we've always been like real, uh, you know, concerned about what we eat, which is why we raise our own cows and, we have lots of fruit trees and we've always had gardens and all these things. Well, about 200 days ago, we started uh, on this crazy carnivore thing. We joined the carnivore cult and, uh, <laughs> and it. It, we, yeah, we have experienced such incredible changes in our sleep patterns. Uh, just, we, just the general wellness has been incredible very impactful and we're very excited and it was it was an absolute for me it was a necessity um i'll let my wife talk and then we can kind of get in maybe to what why i wanted to do this sure sure Absolutely. yeah there's so many different roads that led to carnivore i feel like um so like my husband said um we have always been um he grew up you know kind of healthy crunchy food, you know, his mom, you know, was like, uh, I don't know, shredded wheat or something. I don't, it was grape just nuts. like, you know, grape <laughs> nuts. It was like, you know, whatever they could buy at the health food store. I didn't, I grew up on standard American diet. Um, so just, uh, everything that was pre-made in a can, um, just total junk garbage food. The only thing we didn't do in our house was soda. Praise the Lord for that. Um, yeah, but everything else was just kind of a free for all. It was just a lot of junk food. But then my grandparents, um, when they would have like family meals or things like that, they would cook from scratch and they would cook whole meals, you know, whole food type meals, not canned and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had I, I, I that kind of mixture growing up. And then when we got married, um, I didn't know anything about cooking. If it didn't come from a box or a can, I just had no idea how to boil water. And so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just did everything from a box or a can or whatever. And so little by little, he taught me some things about healthier ways to eat. So by the time we had our first baby, um, I was 25 and um, we were both working full time. So that kind of adds a dynamic to it too, um, with time and all of that. And we had really started to learn about whole foods. So we kind of really switched over to like, if it was in a box or if it was frozen things, you know, pre-made things, we wanted to get rid of all of that and just go with whole foods. Um, so that was 
18 years ago. Uh, so that kind of started us on that journey. But I think when we look back, I know in my life, I, I ate a lot of plants. I didn't eat hardly any meat all growing up. I never hardly ever ate meat unless if I had to, like if my dad was like, okay, like you have to eat this piece of meat that's on your plate. Like, you know, they, they were hunters. So they did some deer meat and stuff too. Um, but I hated it. I didn't like meat. So that led right into our married life. I didn't really like me. I didn't really like touching meat, raw chicken, anything like that. So I just didn't do a lot of meat. And then we kind of got onto this plant-based thing. Uh, when my son who's 18 now was, uh, born and we were already doing the whole foods, but the plant-based, I don't even know that they called it plant-based back then, but it was just kind of coming around. And so that sounded good to, to me because I didn't really like me anyway. And so I just did a lot of plant-based and we would only eat meat if we were going out to dinner, which was very rare <laughs> um, because right. we had three babies in a row. So we did not go out to dinner or out anywhere very often at all. Maybe a few times a year at the most. Um, my dad might watch them for like a date night and we'd, he'd get a hamburger and I would get like a black bean veggie burger because I thought <laughs> I was like doing something good, you know? Right. Uh, and so with the exception of going out to dinner, he would get a steak or, and I would get my veggie burger. Or if we went somewhere really nice, maybe like once or twice a year, I might get a piece of salmon. Um, but other than that, we really weren't doing meat. And then that led us to Texas 10 years ago. And I thought it was really funny because when we got here in our backyard, our backyard was real little, but it backed up to the neighbors and there was all these Angus cows back there. And it's cow country everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's just beef yeah. country, you know? And I, I was thinking, oh, this is really funny. You know, the Lord has a sense of humor because <laughs> here we just eat vegetables and plant-based and we are like in beef country, you know, and we don't really eat that. And so little by little, um, you know, we started to break down, I guess, culturally, we kind of felt some pressure, you know, being in <laughs> That we started getting like little rolls of like ground turkey, you know, because, you know, oh, God forbid you bring home ground beef, you know, in my mind, you know, so right. I started with ground turkey and just little things like that. And then when we moved here, about nine months into being here, um, our neighbors here had um, longhorn cows and he said he'll sell it to us, you know, whole cows at a really discounted price to, I, he just had compassion on us, I think, cause we had so many kids and he just wanted us to have some good meat. And so our freezer always had beef in it, but still we would only eat it. Like, I don't know me, maybe once a week, some of my kids didn't eat meat at all. Um, they just ate vegetables. Uh, he, TD would love to eat meat every yeah. single night. And, uh, and I became incredibly, I became incredibly disenchanted because I kept having all these back issues, which come to find out it was stemming from my shoulder condition that I had. I, I didn't know that. I thought I had yeah. massive issues and these different things. And um, I became so disenchanted because here we are, we're crunchy, we try to eat majorly organic mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm tired. I can't sleep. Um, I got all this pain and inflammation. I, I had incredible brain fog. I didn't realize that's what, that's what it was. And I was so disenchanted. I'm like, man, you know, they talk about getting old. I guess this is getting old right. and getting old is just terrible, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, two, 200 days ago because of, carry a homestead how so my wife stumbled upon a carry video it's funny yeah because i i had always i said look i i need meat like when we eat i need meat that's the deal so dinner needs <laughs> meat in it and i had been doing that but i still felt you know i'm doing all this other stuff that's supposedly good for you and i right. felt terrible i mean i felt terrible and um cabinets full of supplements all and kinds of supplements green powders and of, yep. smoothie and whole foods i mean everything was just 
it was just, you know, a lot, you know, I had a whole cabinet full of fresh fruit, you know, I would get like five different types of fruit every week at the grocery store. And I would just keep it filled in the kitchen because I thought, you know, they should have unlimited fruit, you know, the kids should just be able to unlimited fruit, vegetables, you know, we, we almost killed ourselves trying to grow a garden the last, I don't know, <laughs> nine years, not this year, but um, canning vegetables, doing all of that stuff. So, I mean, we were in it to win it and we had freezers full of meat, but we didn't really, like, I was rationing it out, like just a few times a week. And like I said, some of us just didn't eat it at all, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and then kind of go, that was the going uh, uh, way of thinking, anyways. Right. I mean, for most people, yeah. it was like just a, an occasional thing to eat meat, especially red meat. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then I, I found out I had this arthritic shoulder condition, and it's what was creating all this back and neck issues. And um, so they scoped my shoulder, and then they're four orthopedic surgeons said, well, that you literally have the worst shoulder I've ever seen and you need a shoulder replacement. So, um, so I kept trying to get additional help from them and they're like, well, we want to cut your bum shoulder out and replace it with metal and vinyl mm -hmm. and, and hope that it lasts you 10 years until we have to do it again. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just like, oh boy, Ooh. well, that's not going to work, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, my Cairo rec recommended me and I had done every conceivable type of chiropractic, like advanced orthogonal, Gonstead, indirect force. I mean, I had done the gamut of Since chiropractic. Since we've been married. I mean, he's always done the chiropractor yeah. like two or three times a week. Constant. And, and I even did Arosti. I mean, I was trying to do whatever I could do. And uh, so I met with a stem cell specialist in Dallas. We did stem cell, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, it took away my pain and everything, but mm -hmm. he's like, you know, this is going to kind of freeze it where it's at. And hopefully this treatment will last you three to five years and we'll do it again. And, um, just mm -hmm. as God will have it about 200 days, cause I'm like, you know, they've removed all this scar tissue. They've opened up all this space in the cavity mm -hmm. and everything. Cause what had happened, scar tissue had developed so densely it was pressing on a nerve. And I was just in radiating pain, like 24 seven. Yeah. And the surgeon that went in and did his shoulder surgery, it was just kind of a last ditch effort. He said, I'll go in and do this before we just, you know, throw up our hands and do a full shoulder replacement. But you're probably going to need a shoulder replacement and you're probably going to need two shoulder replacements because the other shoulder isn't as progressed as that one is but it's on its way like you just have arthritis in your body you know so mm -hmm. when he went in there he was in there for four hours and the surgeon came out and he was like he's got the worst shoulder I have ever seen he said he needs a shoulder replacement and I said when and he said today like he needs a shoulder replacement he's like I did wow. the best I could I cleaned it up but he's like I couldn't even, he said, it's so tight that I couldn't even get my scope in there to just see what was going on. He's like, it's just a disaster. He was like, your wow. husband's just been in incredible pain, you know? So yeah, then we went to the stem cell guy. Yeah. And, and what had happened is, you know, I'm like, I know that this, this, uh, scar tissue and whatnot's going to come back. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's what scar tissue does, you know? And, um, so in the back of my mind, I'm always, you know, thinking that and right about the time where faith decided, Hey, why don't we all just do this carnivore thing? Yeah. I was starting to get like these faint feelings like in that arm. And I'm just like, Oh man, this is like flashbacks. I know what this is, you know, and this is really bad. And so that's when we made the switch and that was about 200 days ago. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, the improved sleep, um, which just does like everything miracles on yeah. my shoulder, just being able to sleep. Um, well, that, so and, let, let's rewind, let's rewind a second. So why faith, why did you suggest the carnivore diet? Was, were you looking for answers for his shoulder or was it something else? Yeah. 
I mean, his quality of life for the past seven years has been horrible, just absolutely horrible. You know, he was just unable to do anything, really. I mean, he could go to work just barely. And there were times where he had to hire an assistant to go with him to, you know, uh, put the ladder out Same and stuff. just yeah. help him do things because he couldn't physically do the job that he was supposed to do. Um, so he was paying somebody else to do all the physical work. And there were several times in the past seven years that, uh, you know, we've come to a point where my 18 year old now is like, OK, if daddy needs me to go to work with him, I'm, I might have to do all the physical stuff. And daddy just does all the paperwork because, you know, we're a family and we need income, you know, so we were really at our wits end. And like I said, just the quality of life. And then with that, you know, for a man for anybody, but, uh, for a man, you know, a young guy, <laughs> we're still young, uh, right. you know, and, young. you know, it just weighs on you mentally when oh, you're yeah. just in pain constantly, you're not sleeping, you have no quality of life. You can't do anything, you know, even just, uh, getting dressed, pulling up your pants, zippering your pants. Uh, you know, he loves, he loves to graft fruit trees and just the fine motor skills. He didn't even have to, graft the fruit trees anymore mm -hmm. and just me as his wife watching him deteriorate that quickly it was just really scary so i was always looking at other, and i love to weight train and yeah he had none six of that. days a week i mean and, he couldn't do anything yeah, he could that, barely could, stretch i yeah. mean it it was just a no quality of life at all and last year we went we went and got the stem cells done. So he had stem cells taken out of his hip and they spin them right there. And then they inject them in, um, with an ultrasound into, you know, whatever area you, you yeah. need them in. And he said, allow like six weeks for, you know, to see what it's going to do. It's not going to improve anything, but it will pause all of the degeneration at best. Mm -hmm. And, it'll just buy you some time and some years, you know, and then we might have to do it again. And it just kind of pauses everything. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, we waited those weeks and it just, he had no improvements at all. And we went on a cruise last year with our family and he pretty much laid in the stateroom most of the time, um, just not sleeping in pain. He just really didn't. I mean, other than eating meals and things like that, mm -hmm. he really just didn't, he wasn't able to do anything, you know? Um, and that contrasted to this year, we just got back from the same exact cruise on the same boat and all of that. And he was uh, boogie boarding and he was playing pickleball with the kids. And I mean, just, going, night you know, I mean, just too. night and day difference, different person, you know, that is so. awesome. I thought you were going to say he was diving off of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> if they would uh, let me. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you just happened to come across uh, uh, one of Carrie's videos and yeah, uh, so I guess we have been following him just because of the homesteading uh, things. And, right. you know, we find a lot of homesteaders and I thought, wow, this is really fascinating. I mean, it was pretty early on in his carnivore journey that I started mm -hmm. following him. And I was, I don't know if it was his 30 day update or whatever. It was early. And I'm like, this is incredible. I mean, this man's really getting his life back, you know, and he had a lot of pain and different things that he was struggling with. And, I was like, well, you know, we have meat in our freezers <laughs> and we're all we raised cows. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. you know, I mean, what, what if this could really work, you know, and we had friends in real life who are about 10 years older than us. They went carnivore about a year ago. And so I thought they were crazy, uh, but <laughs> I didn't want to discourage them because, you know, they were coming off the American standard diet. And I thought, well, anything that they can do to get off of that, yes. you know, soda and all that stuff will be an improvement. So he reversed his type two diabetes and they both lost like a lot of weight and just new energy. Lots of things improve, right? Everything improves. And so I'm watching Carrie, you know, and then I'm, and then I'm like looking at my pantry and looking at these freezers and I'm like thinking, I mean, 
we've done everything else. Right, exactly. We've done everything else. We've done plant-based. Exactly. We did fruititarian for mm-hmm. like a year or two. <laughs> I don't even yeah. remember. Maybe two years, some variation of it. Um, we've done whole foods. We've done gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free for five or six years now. Um, we've done juicing, like crazy people. You know, we've bought like grocery carts full of juice and vegetables and or vegetables. I think juice. that's what's kind of interesting about our story is we can, we can honestly say that we have, we've done all these different modalities mm-hmm. relatively faithfully and strictly and it was so uh discouraging because we had been very uh faithful to do all these things that you're supposed to do and we've read all the books and you know the 80 10 10 and the china study and all these different things and we Mm -hmm. we you know and it wasn't like i'm gonna try this for 30 days or anything you know what i mean like we're gonna stick to this we're gonna gut it out it works Mm -hmm. you know and it's great and longevity and blah 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 Mm -hmm. and then to do all that and just be like dude i feel like crap like i mean and and i was i was literally i was like man this is just getting old the uh can't sleep uh i feel terrible i'm in pain um I have all this inflammation and getting old is terrible. And like, and I mean, now I I had extreme circumstance. I was in severe pain and had mechanical damage and issues. And, and I can honestly say, and I'm, I'm, I've never, I've always had a very sound mindset. So I've never been troubled with depression. And, and I have, I have incredible compassion for people that struggle with that Mm -hmm. and have dealt with that. And I've always been like super positive. And there was many, I, and, and that's the thing, I have compassion for people in constant pain because there were many times that I literally did want to die. I'm like, it would just be, you know, if I would just die, wow. you know, um, it would be so much better. I'd be out of pain. You know, my wife and children, there we have a couple million dollars. You know, we're debt free. We have a couple million bucks. You know, and I thought it all out. I'm like, they would mm-hmm. get the life insurance proceeds. They would be set you know, and I would be out of pain. Right. And I, you know, I, I thought that I thought that more than a hundred times. He never said it. No, I, of wow. course I never said. It. Um, and the other things that I never said is, you know, you're a man, you're active, you're physical. I have all these boys. Right. And I always dreamed of, and you know, cause I would train six days a week and I was very committed to it. And one of the main reasons was, as I was hypoglycemic and it was how I regulated my blood sugar because you can't do that with diet, you know, you can't do that with diet. So, uh, and, um, and I was very much, uh, I very much enjoyed it and was addicted to it as part of my regimen. And I always dreamed of, oh man, when my boys get older, we'll be able to train together, together and do kettlebells and I can teach them all the tricks of the trade that I've learned and all this stuff. And then to get to that phase in life and to be relatively speaking, incapacitated, is kind of like devastating as a man and then and then being and then literally losing the physical ability to do uh what i do to make a living um was incredibly uh defeating it was a very it was it was a serious challenge and I can, I can say that I never uh, got depressed about it. You know, I do, I do know that God is in control and he's aware of what we're going through and he gives us these struggles and challenges uh, to, to overcome so that he can have the honor and the glory for it. But um, that doesn't mean that over a hundred times I wanted to die. Right. Um, I, le- right. I left it in God's hand and I'm here. So, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. so, That's awesome. so that was we jumped in. We just jumped in the deep end. Uh, I saw Carrie's videos. I watched a bunch of them and I was like, I mean, we have nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose here. Let's try it. You know? So I called my friend who's been carnivore for like a year now. And I said, so what do I make for like meals and stuff? And she said, just meat. It's just meat, you know? And I was like, Okay. Okay. I could do this. You know? So, um, so that was it. It was just baby steps and we just kind of fumbled through and figured it out. And, uh, we still had baskets of fruit on the counter that we had to finish through that week. So I was like, well, they can just finish eating that up. And then when that's gone, I'm just not buying anymore. And, um, 
you know, then I found uh, Dr. Barry and beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I was like, well, I mean, it doesn't get any easier we than have that. Chickens, we you have know? cows. Check this out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and and sausage. And a couple weeks into it, we had planned to go down and visit friends in South Texas. So that kind of gave me a new challenge because I was like, okay, so we're gonna go rent this Airbnb house and all the things that I normally do to provide food for our family, like if we go away, everything, is, this is a whole twist, right? So, but it was so easy. We just went to the grocery store. We got a bunch of eggs and a bunch of sausage and bacon and hamburger. And we all ate and enjoyed it. And awesome. we invited friends over the one afternoon. And I said, do you just mind? It was like lunchtime. I said, we'll just have eggs and bacon and sausage and all that. And they, they loved it. They were like, it was totally great. And it was a normal meal. So everybody was happy with it. So, um, so we did that and yeah, we kind of just jumped in. Yeah. And now, so we, so we were probably about 30 days in and, uh, you know, I was feeling great and I was joking around. I said, I feel so great. I bet you I could do a push up, right? Because I'd been trying to do these like sissy push ups against the table yeah. and all this stuff, like nothing. I mean, I had nothing. And I'm like, I feel so great. I could do a push up. And, and so I'm like, I'm, they're like, yeah, right. And we're like, all there in the yeah. kitchen. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do one right now. And she's like, don't hurt yourself. You know? <laughs> and um, I, I got down super strict. I cracked. I, I I crunched out like 20 push-ups and I was just like, Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's insane. I'm like, I just did that. Like I couldn't do one. Yeah. I couldn't look. I was like, he's going to hurt himself. We're going to end up in surgery tomorrow. <laughs> and, and so, so fast forward, uh, like another 30 days. Right. And I'm at work and I, and I've been, I've been telling the guys, I'm like, Hey, look, you know, I, I switched up because they knew what kind of physical condition I, I, I it was, you know, I, I'm a, I'm kind of senior position uh, at my work and I'm a major cog in the machine. And there was, I mean, I even had the discussion at work, like, I don't know if I can physically do this anymore. And they're probably trying to think like, oh, well, what do we do? How do we replace TD and different things? And, um, it's hilarious. I come into work and uh, the owner of the company is talking to my manager and he was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to just start eating meat. You, you know, this guy, Jordan Peterson and all this stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I was like, I've been doing I've been doing that for like 90 days. Right. And I'm talking to him and they knew they knew what was up and everything I'd been through. And uh, and I was like, yeah, and I can just and I I jumped down on the floor and I just, while I was talking to him, I just started cranking out reps, you know, and I did like 40 push push-ups, and they're both standing there like, Whoa, that's incredible. Like that's ridiculous. And, uh, so right now at my work, I got one, two, I got three plus, plus the owner. So I got four guys and I know three of them are very strict. Um, and, uh, we're all just, you know, holding each other accountable and uh, giving each other tips and tricks, but it's really neat to watch other people that were, you know, that needed to make a change and watch them make a change and watch the transformation and to be able to support each other. Yeah. So it's been really cool. That's awesome. You know, it, and what's really crazy is, is, you know, you, you guys had the key literally right outside your door the whole time. Isn't that, yeah. isn't that insane? I mean, just an, I, when I think back on it, it's it's like the answer is right there the whole time. And, and you just needed that little bit of information to say shop from this section of the grocery and not this one. Or in your case, shop from your backyard. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and not only that, what's more fascinating to me is like it's so incredibly inexpensive and everybody gets so scared. You're like, right. oh, meat's expensive. This is going to be hard. And like when you see all the costs that you eliminate mm -hmm. from your diet, it is incredibly inexpensive, not to mention the, the health costs that you're not going to generate, you know, mm -hmm. that when you apply that towards your food, it makes it even that much more inexpensive. And then the amount of waste that we no longer generate buying all this packaged canned stuff, we've reduced our waste production 
by 75%. So we went from a 50 gallon trash can yeah. in our kitchen closet to a small, <laughs> to a very small tote. Yeah. And we fill one tote. Uh, we, I compost all of our coffee grounds and all of our eggshells and any paper products. And then in our, we, I mean, I bet it's you it's just plastic wrappers from meat. So yeah. I bet you it's, I bet much. you it could be, I bet you we're producing maybe 20% of the waste. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah. dramatic and it's wow. so green. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of incredible yeah. that this one point solution will literally resolve an enormous amount of issues. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. It's so non-complicated. It's in a very real way. It's inexpensive. And relatively speaking, everybody has access to it. Sure. True. So so you you're it's environmentally friendly then. Yep. Right. Uh, very much so. Yeah. And so I you think guys, we when you were eating vegetables and fruits, you you guys didn't have any uh any of that go to waste, did you? Oh exactly. Wow. That's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Exactly. There's so much and, yeah. Okay. I compost it, but yeah. that, who right. wants to buy it and throw it out? Yeah. <laughs> Especially what little, like who had this half eaten apple? Oh, you know? yeah. That it, used to drive him crazy, drive you know? Uh, and that, yeah. yeah. What, what's that smell in the fridge? Oh man, there's radishes <laughs> from, I don't know how long ago <laughs> in the back turned to liquid. <laughs> constantly exactly. you yeah. know and just even the whole foods like oats and rice and just pasta or different things like that that we would cook in big batches you know you'd use it you know for meals you know as the week went on but then it gets to a point that you're just like oh throw it out to the chickens or you know throw it out Feed to it the pigs to the dog, or whatever yeah. but the pigs, yeah. there was a lot of food waste mm -hmm. i mean just mm -hmm. a lot you know and now it's there's just minimal, minimal waste, even yeah. from a monetary standpoint Sure. with the meat. It's so easy to sure. reheat and to mix it up yeah. and to come up with some yeah. different concoction and it just doesn't go to waste. Yeah. And, and our dogs are carnivore. We just give them ground beef and eggs and they're fine. Yeah. They're, they're doing good. We just got a new little puppy and I, I got her the little cans, you know, dog food from the grocery store to start her off and just kept putting a little bit of that on her plate with the ground beef and the eggs. And now she just eats the beef and the eggs and she's doing good. And it's oh, crazy. That. It's like, it's so, so simple. simple. And, yeah. you know, I, so I was like, okay, so all I have to do is get beef in the freezer and I mean, we have chickens for eggs, but we have neighbors that have eggs too. And there's a grocery store up the road mm -hmm. that has eggs, you know? So it's like, that's all I have to do. Are you kidding me? Like I've been doing all of this work for all these years, you know, so the simplicity is great. And I can imagine with you, cause you said you weren't, you know, uh, necessarily a cook, you know, in the kitchen. So it was probably sort of a pain to have to do all that food prep. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was yeah, absolutely. Yep. So yeah, we're, I mean, we're just all been tickled to death with it. And the boys, you know, it took some time. There was a couple of our kids that didn't really eat meat. So, um, and I wasn't a big meat eater. So I just made myself, you know, I heard Dr. Barry was like, you're an adult, like <laughs> you just need to eat it no matter what, you know, I think he was talking about fat or, you know, stuff like that. Like just mm -hmm. put on your big girl pants or you know, big boy pants and do it no matter, just make yourself, you know? And I was like, okay, that's what I have to do, you know? So for the kids, you know, in the beginning, we allow like uh ketchup, like organic, you know, no fructose ketchup, like some sauces to make it more fun. Um, we let them do carnivore waffles for a while. It was just scrambled eggs and a waffle maker. And then we let them put a little honey on it, you know, just things to keep the troops happy, like, you know, cause I knew it was going to be, you know, a little a bit of a transition yeah, sure. and I, I didn't want any bad attitudes from it. So I just, I wanted it all to be happy and good. So whatever we have to do, you know, sometimes we circle back around and we start buying lots of bacon again, or well, now we got off this cruise and they got introduced to these little breakfast sausages. And so we have like lots of these breakfast sausages in the refrigerator, but I'm like, Whatever we have to do to keep people happy, you yeah. know, there was sour cream on the cruise. So everybody started loving that. I mean, sour cream, it's like 
less than four dollars for this giant like half gallon container down here you know and it's like right that's cheap that's so cheap yeah. i mean mm-hmm. butter and sour cream as toppings on our food now it's like that's it's not expensive you know compared to what we were doing you know right. i mean do you know how many bags of cinnamon toast you have to buy like to <laughs> i mean my kids can eat half a loaf of cinnamon toast and they're still hungry in mm-hmm. 20 minutes you know yeah. for sure <laughs> So, so you mm-hmm. have transitioned your entire family to carnivore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Wow, we all eat impressive. the same. <laughs> yeah, we all eat the same. Uh, my my little kids still eat some berries, so they have blueberries, uh, frozen blueberries, and they have um, frozen like some mixed berries in the freezer. It's not even every single day, but if they want them, we just say in the evening, like as a dessert or something, they can have that. And mm-hmm. for like special like birthdays or things like that, we get ice cream for them. Um, and so- I converted our garden. I converted our garden because we we installed a mid lighter garden with like a with like a drip system. So I converted our garden into a huge blueberry patch, yeah. and then okay. I collect fig trees. So I got all of my collector varieties in there. So my our garden will be basically kind of like a curated um, fruit array because I'm real into like propagating and we have about 400 right. fruit trees. So I'm still super into that. Um, when it's in season, well, I, I know I will eat it. Right. Um, I really enjoy that. But, but like when the pears were in season, like the end of the summer, the, the trees were loaded with pears and like the little kids might have one or something like that. And or, it was great for the animals, you know, for the for the pigs and the chickens. Kept, it was yeah, just we incredible. Kept picking I mean, them and was, giving them to the pigs. So yeah. I mean, that's fine. Or give them to neighbors. I guess will be you mm-hmm. know good. But the pressure is off, so you can just enjoy growing trees and doing that kind of stuff and propagating, mm-hmm. and you don't have all the pressure of like, how am I ever going to provide? You know, as a homesteader, you know, like. How am I ever going to get there? Like, Mm. you know, it's just, it was just a vicious, all consuming circle of like, I mean, I would have to grow a field of green beans, you know, like I would have to grow a field of tomatoes to have enough tomato sauce for everybody. You know, it was just enough was never enough. And I'm like, I, I just don't understand. But when we were doing meat, I'm like, okay, I mean, we have cows. Yeah. And then, and then with the cows, so. Cause I've been trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to resiliently feed these cows? And if we expand our herd and whatnot. So, um, I started doing a lot of research and I really got into mulberry trees and mulberry trees are, they call them, they call it tree hay. So I've been collecting different varieties of mulberries to get the perfect forage. And then I'm going to propagate them, grow them out. I'm going to have to grow them up to a decent size before I plant them over in our cow pasture because the cows will mow them down. Um, So that's what I'm working on for a more resilient, kind of like a silo pasture Mm -hmm. with our cows with mulberry trees. And I'm not aware of anybody that's done that yet. But uh, so that's one experiment that we're running um, right now. Yeah. That'll be be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, But it it just community you know i mean there's people around that have cows i think pretty much anywhere anybody is unless you live in a major city area in america you're probably not too far from somebody who's raising cows or raising you know chickens for eggs and you can you know source some of your things maybe not all your things but maybe some of your things local and it just It's great because it takes some of the pressure off of you too. You don't have to provide all of your stuff. And it reinforces and supports your community. You know, it's, it's kind of like, like, for example, we, our chickens stopped laying and I mean, we eat a lot of eggs. Like when I tell you, we eat a lot of eggs. I'm saying that we could eat 90 eggs in a weekend. Yes. Oh my goodness. Very, very yeah, easily. Very easily, yeah. like without trying. Yeah. And so um, there was a sign like like a mile up the road, eggs. And um, so I could because I'm like, yeah, we could go to the store and buy eggs. But hey, if I buy them from my neighbor, they're cheaper I'm, I'm usually. for cheaper yeah. and they're going to be raised better. They're going to have more rooms. They're going to have higher quality food. They're going to, you know, 
be more of a free range, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so I started buying from her while I cleaned her out. Like I kept her because our chicken, I mean, we have a lot of layers and they just totally stop. So I started buying from her. I cleaned her out. And then I'm like, Hey, I need more eggs, you know? And then she's like, I have a friend. So now, so now I have a network of three neighbors and if we, and now, and now, of course, our chickens have started laying again. Yes. So, well, we added a light bulb in there. So oh, I forgot. No. Just you know, the day and nighttime hours, it just started getting dark earlier, and then I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, that's right, they need a light bulb in there." But now so we have a network yes. of three neighbors. So if you ever need eggs, you know, so it's yeah. it's really neat. So we're we're keeping our money in our community, and we're getting a higher quality product at a lower price point. Right. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it's really cool. That's awesome. And for so, little- so oh, your awesome. your your shoulder, uh, TD, it's uh, it's effectively healed now. I mean, you're doing all these push-ups, so I'm, I'm assuming that it's it's yeah. better for you. So, yeah. So that range is good. I still have um, I still have, I can stretch fully up, but there's definitely some mechanical stuff I can't do. You know, and and all the doctors told me that they're like, look, certain things you're just not going to be able to do. And, but mm-hmm. I can, I can't do pull-ups yet. I'm working on it um, because I am missing 30, 30 to 40% of my labrum is gone. Nice. So when I do any of those type of anterior rotations, like it's bone on bone and it's not cool. Like that doesn't feel good. So yeah. So, but effectively like, and I, I really, the, I made a big mistake because after I got everything done, And after I got the stem cells, I should have taken a picture of my shoulder and it, but it was, it was ultra disgusting. It was, it was flesh wrapped over skeleton. Yeah, it was. And it, it looked like your shoulder. It looked like this. It looked like a square, like a total square. You could see the bones. And it was, it was traumatic to look at, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but now, I mean, it's relatively speaking, all the muscle tones back. Um, again. It, it is it's miraculous looking i mean it's you know and it it's still it's not perfect you know but it's right. a right. trillion percent better than it was yeah. oh, i can sleep at night yeah, yeah. and awesome. it's round it's yeah. not like skeleton it's not void, yeah gross you know? looking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so i i have a well uh similar experience not not with uh, as intense pain as you had uh you know with and having to do surgeries and things like that but Once I went carnivore, I had shoulder, I had, that gave me shoulder problems. And I theorized that the, the inflammation that was in my shoulder was keeping the nerves and things in place. And then when the inflammation went down, it was allowed to move around and stuff and it was causing me pain and I couldn't lift my arm, you know, higher than this. Uh, Hmm. so I bought this book and, uh, it's, a orthopedic surgeon he only does effectively just shoulders and he wrote this book to keep people off of his operating table and literally the trick uh, that he teaches people in this exercise is to hang so i thought yes. well i can hang, right so now uh-huh. i can that's wow. all i do yeah. i just I, awesome. I, I hung for you know maybe 10 seconds yeah. at a time for three or four times a day and then gradually increase that and increase that and increase yep. that along with some uh, exercise specific exercises exercise. that he had super simple and uh yeah it's so the effect i know the bone, exactly. what's that you know what book i'm talking about exactly what you're talking about yep and and okay. that that book and those exercises did extend me tremendously because i it and that that's what was really frustrating for me because I would be in severe pain and locked up and I did, I was able to exercise through it and get relief and, and get back to normalcy in small pockets. That's what made it so frustrating because I'm like, man, I've been able to break this cycle several times, but what was happening was that the, uh, the scar tissue was building up and the scar tissue ultimately did me in just because of the missing labrum. Um, But yeah, hanging, and then doing those circular um, exor- weighted exercises are, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I recommend, you know, uh, Pete Agoscu wrote a book, the Agoscu exercises, but then that doc wrote that shoulder and hanging with those lightweight uh, exercises. If anybody has shoulder problems, it is, it is awesome. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, it was that was amazing. I mean, I would have severe acute pain uh, if I did something like uh, open a bag, and it just yep. suddenly snapped. Oh my goodness, I was on the floor in pain. Yeah. 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 And uh, now, now I have none of those issues and it's just from hanging, which is really strange. Yeah, that's awesome. And I do, I still hang every day. I got a pull-up bar here in the studio yeah. and I hang multiple times a day and I'm a big proponent of uh, inversion. I do an inversion table. I have a teeter inversion and that okay. makes a lot of difference too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But now you're not like, yeah, now I don't have to live on it. Yeah, I used to have to like live on that thing. I used right. to have to get up in the middle of the night when I wasn't sleeping and hang upside down. And I would hang upside down for like an hour and a half. Oh my goodness. And I was, oh yeah, I was so sleep deprived. I would get on the inversion table upside down and fall asleep upside down, like, oh, like Count Dracula. I don't like. What <laughs> It's bad. It was, it was when he bad. when he came home, he was on the inversion table or doing some type of exercise or something to try to get some type of relief. And that was with all the chiropractic. Psycho psychologically, my life revolved around okay, how do I get out of pain? Yeah. Like uh I'm gonna try to go to sleep. Okay, I need to sleep because if I don't sleep, I'm gonna have more pain. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I can't sleep. So now what do I do? I'm in pain, you know, and and my for seven years, for seven years, my life revolved around, okay, well, now I got to do pull-ups and mm -hmm. now I got to do this and now I got to do that just because I need to try to stay out of pain so I can go to work and do all the things I got to do. And uh, yeah, it was, it was very, um, it was a prison. It was all consuming. Yeah, yes. it was a prison. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're feeling better, man. That's, uh, that's definitely got to be great I for your family too thousand yes. percent better yeah yeah we yeah. have a new person in the house i mm -hmm. mean it's just <laughs> night and day yeah. difference it's very know? dramatic yeah yeah, yeah. So, so td you I, you were helped but what about what about you faith have you seen any improvements yeah. absolutely yeah so um you know just pretty early on of course you lose a lot of weight um or i did uh just cleaning up my diet and taking out all of these you know, exercise dishes. Um, so yeah, my 30 pounds of weight that I was holding on to forever and ever. And then I would, you know, do these different things over the years, you know, to try to like restrict my calories and fast and do these different things and cut out desserts and everything. And I would barely squeak by to lose, you know, 25 pounds of it. And then as soon as I, you know, ate a little bit or smelled some food of something, it seemed <laughs> like, you know, it would just come right back, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is horrible, you know, but I've been able to lose my 30 pounds, keep it off. I, I mean, I'm pretty much the same weight that I was when we got married. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so that I feel good, you know, of course you, you lose a little bit of weight, you feel good, uh, have mm -hmm. good energy. Um, and then it, that just snowballs into everything, right? I mean, I, I want to go outside. I enjoy being outside now. Like I'm like tonight, I was like, I gotta, I gotta run. I gotta do my sprints before I come sit down here, you know, cause I just I have so much energy, you know, even though I've been up since first thing this morning, homeschooled three kids, went to the dentist's office, did dentist appointments with five kids, you know, uh, helped the boys with, you know, the dinner stuff and then come and sit in here. But I'm just like, I got to go sprint. Like I got to, I just got to run around for a little bit, you know? So, and I'm 45 years old, you know, so I'm not a spring chicken. Uh, and it just, but it feels good, you know, just the fresh air and everything. So I think that just, plays into everything. I mean, just your, your mental state, you know, especially as a mom, I see, you know, going from like survival mode, mom, you know, just being 30 pounds overweight, you know, more sluggish, not enjoying going outside or like, where do I have to walk to? What do you have to show me? You know, and now I'm just like running around with them, you know, outside. So it's just, it's just a, a lot of, you know, just really great things that I've noticed lifestyle wise. And it's and it's a self-regulating because when you when you come to the realization that wow, just this minor shift in diet and it's gonna correct these issues, and then you're like, what else? 
you know what? I'm going to start doing this grounding stuff. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. And now that I'm sleeping better and getting up earlier and uh, maybe I'll do some cold plunging and I'll start introducing some different cycles of fasting and different things. And it yeah. really becomes such a synergy because mm -hmm. one, you have the inclination to do it. You have the energy to do it. You have the mindset to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the mental clarity comes back and then you have this acuity and uh, it starts to become like this process where you're like, well, if I made that small change and had this dramatic result, like what other small changes can I make that are, don't even cost anything. Sure. And, you know, just to have all of these incredible results. Yeah. And so it just becomes like a success cycle, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. I think it just becomes part of almost like self-care where you just realize that, okay, I, I'm feeling good. Well, let me, you know, go sit out on the porch and, you know, I'm taking the dogs out to go potty or whatever. And the sun's coming up. Let me just enjoy five minutes out here and looking at the sun coming up or, okay, it's evening time. You know, it's beautiful. The sun's starting to go down. I'll go do my sprints or I'll just go walk around or one evening we were out there with my little ones and, um, I had missed my, the sunset going down, but the stars were out and it was beautiful. And we were out running around in the backyard. I'm like, I mean, it's beautiful out. I mean, running's fun at nighttime too. As long as you have a lit up backyard, you know, I'm going to trip on something, you know, um, right. like this is cool too. I just, I don't know when you don't, uh, my husband says it's probably from somebody else, but you know, most people don't do good because they don't feel good. And I know Jim Rohn, yeah. as a mom, you know, that was totally true. And trying to like force yourself to have the motivation to like get on the treadmill and do something when you just don't feel good, you don't have the energy to do it, you know? And I think it's because we're not feeding our bodies what they need, you know, and it's meat and eggs. <laughs> I mean, it's very simple. So if you eat enough meat and eggs, you just start to feel good, you know, and your brain turns mm -hmm. on and you just, it, life is easier and better, you know, and you don't desire to go back, you know. That's awesome. And the, so, the, the oh, challenge is, uh, the challenge is, is when you get this mental clarity and this motivation, you are not a malleable person that's just trying to subsist and exist. And that is a threat to certain infrastructures, uh, especially infrastructures that want to destroy the beef industry. So I think that's, that's part of it as well. I and mean, we don't have to go deep, no. deep dive into yeah. that, but um, that's why, and, and that's why I love Sean Baker and the stuff that he's doing mm -hmm. and the way he, he puts his stuff out there and, and is mocking a lot of it. It's really great. Um, but there's so much truth to that. And and the great thing is, is once you have that energy and acuity, you can invest some time on that side as well. Um, pushing back, you know, and that's why we're excited about raising our own cows and making them available to the, to our local community, because we want, we don't, want to just have the solution and share our story but we want to be able to be abundant and share that as well mm -hmm. um which is which is um really is very fulfilling that's awesome yeah that's uh sean baker he is he is a little funny when it comes to some of those posts <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure yeah he's yeah. So yeah. you guys have seen both seen improvements on, on your diet uh, and, and you have all of your children eating a carnivore diet as well. Have you guys noticed any improvements with them or have they shared with you guys that, you know, anything that they've noticed that's different with them? Yeah, uh, lots of improvements from them, too. I mean, they were healthy kids as far as we mm -hmm. knew anyway, but um, our oldest son, he uh, was able to drop quite a bit of weight. Um, and he didn't appear to be like an overweight kid mm -hmm. anyway, but it just, it, it really just took him down. I forget how many inches on his, um, 
waist size. Yeah, he he actually didn't lose any weight on the scale, but okay. he lost two or three inches on his waist. Right, his waist just shrunk. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, and at that time, uh, he was uh, working out a lot too. So he's kind of had to take a break because he had shoulder surgery too. Mm -hmm. um, second shoulder surgery runs in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, Left shoulder. So, shoulder. Yeah. So, <laughs> but he's going to be starting back. Uh, in January, he'll be all healed up from that. And then he'll be able to start working out again, but just all different things. Um, their skin dramatically. Yeah. Totally cleared up. For yeah. teenagers, you know, I saw a big difference in their skin. They didn't have to be on skin medication anymore. It's not perfect, sure. but, um, but definitely a yeah, difference. And their diet's not perfect either. They, they treat themselves. <laughs> yeah. Ice. They kind of, they, they, they indulge they, in cheese or anything like that. Any, any kind of dairy. Yeah, cheese on their burgers and they do have ice cream probably more than we know probably more than they should <laughs> probably more than they should so um, that could have to do with mm -hmm. their skin too mm -hmm. uh but you know and uh one of our sons too just really is more of an emotional kid just really uh had more of like um an emotional he's a younger teenager like just more emotional ups and roller downs coaster. and roller coaster kind of you know so there was a lot of me kind of coaching him through that the last couple years of like look it's just your hormones you know it's nothing unnormal or anything it's just sometimes you're going to get really frustrated and it's just your hormones you're not you know and and so or upset or whatever the emotion is you know and uh, since going carnivore, I mean, he is just really flattened super yeah. flattened out. I mean, just me and our relationship has changed a lot. Um, he's just more level and he was definitely a bit, you know, not as much of a meat eater. Um, mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. not my meat eater kid. Like if we had sweet potatoes and whatever, I don't know. We didn't have steaks that much back because then. he would have very severe reactions to gluten. Yeah. He was very food sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he would become like asthmatic and all different kinds of things like that. Yeah. yeah so just, oh, that's been a big difference. And even just my little kids, their body composition, mm -hmm. um, I don't know about their weight necessarily has changed, but their body composition has changed mm -hmm. that they just got really streamlined, you know, and, uh, and they're just like, you know, I mean, they've always been active, healthy kids, but, but watching the shape of their bodies and they're little, I mean, they're eight, seven and five right now, but just seeing that change, I'm like, wow. And it, the muscle. Yeah. It's fascinating. Like these little boys and they become like these muscle sharks. Yeah. Like they just, and they're not, you know, they're just, they're just doing stuff, man. Yeah, they're, they're just, just doing their around. thing. They're yeah. not, they're not like doing uh regimented calisthenics or <laughs> no, anything. No. Uh -uh. And right. just to watch their body change. Yeah. And it, all it is is like, oh wow, you are what you eat. They've always said right. that. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you eat you eat a muscle and you turn into a little muscle. So sure. that's it's, it's very fascinating, yeah. just as from a anecdotal observation from a lay person like myself it's fascinating to yeah. Me. yeah and i That's just awesome. didn't realize that carbohydrates were just converting into sugar so like even though i thought i was doing good with you know whole oats or whatever steel cut oats and some berries and nuts and chia seeds and whatever you know for breakfast and then you know lunch would be like i, I don't know but just like you know all of the different grains and carbs and potatoes and all of that stuff it just all converts to sugar you know and uh, i've seen a big difference in their teeth and their oral health mm -hmm. um big time we just got back from the dentist today you know and um they're still following those same cavities that the dentist has been like from keeping, before keeping yeah, eyeballs yeah. on mm -hmm. from before but right. they had really like a lot of cavities before yeah. like an insane amount and of once cavities. again this is this indirect cost right that we don't associate with that once you switch over this is an expense you're going to eliminate mm -hmm. and it's fascinating mm -hmm. i mean and i'm sure there's there's bean counter nerdy spreadsheet people that could really get like dive deep down into this and right. break it mm -hmm. out unfortunately i'm like a big picture helicopter 
thirty thousand feet guy because but i would right. love for somebody to like nerd out into the data right. and just dispel that this is like expensive because i bet you it would be a dramatic reduction in overall expense like i bet you oh, it yeah. would be hard to calculate how how dramatic the savings yeah. are yeah for sure i can't even imagine how much a feeling is now i mean when i was a kid i had quite a few feelings myself and i remember seeing the bills from that you know, mm -hmm. 40 years ago <laughs> and, uh, sure. you know, it was like 150 bucks back then, you know, I don't know what it would be now. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty hefty bills. So it was just, that's been good to see the improvement on that end. And, you know, um, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say, you know, just for our, our size family, our big staples, you know, how we make it work is just ground beef, lots of ground beef, lots of eggs, eggs are cheap. Um, we did add back in, uh, sour cream since we went on vacation. People are excited I'm about sour, sour cream. cream uh, bacon is more of like a luxury cause it's more expensive. Um, even cheaper bacon is just more expensive when you times it by a bunch of people eating bacon. So we have to make a lot of bacon. Yeah. So we, we, we go in spurts with bacon, you know, um, and, yeah, that's that's pretty much another thing. Another thing that I find fascinating, you know, because I've had all this inflammation. So I've I've always had some type of bursitis or tennis elbow or whatever. And what I find fascinating now, and even though before it was the the whole purpose of inflammation and pain is to say, hey, something's wrong. Right. And it's supposed mm -hmm. to say, hey, something's wrong. It tells your brain. And then you as a thinking human being are supposed to say, okay, something's wrong. I need to modify. I need to make a change so that the pain goes away. And what's neat now is I have, I have arthritis in the same, in the same arm of, of my bad shoulder. And it's, it's neat now because I'm like, oh man, my elbows bother me. And I'm like, what did I eat something or did I, but you know, today elbow feels great you know, no pain. I've been, you know, I've been eating clean. I didn't accidentally eat anything. Cause that's one thing I noticed on the cruise, you know, I was getting, uh, I was getting omelets in the morning mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. second day I noticed, I'm like, Oh, look, this is oily. I'm like, man, they're, they're cooking this and something, you know what I mean? And I'm sure it's a, some type of seed oil. It's something that right. they're certainly not. And so I cut out the, um, I cut out the omelet, you know, and it, it's just kind of neat now when you start to feel you're like, you know, your body's telling yeah. you, hey, man, something's up. Yeah. And then you make the change and you're like, oh, cool. I'm good. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the way God created you with the warning signs and everything, now you can actually get the warning sign. Okay. Okay. Make right. the change. Oh, cool. Pain went away. I'm yeah. back. I'm good. You know? everything's I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. My body's doing what it's supposed to do. Wow. It's almost like somebody created this thing like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, for, for me, sure. I never had like serious arthritis or anything like that, but I just had the nor what we say, right. Is the normal, like 40 year old little aches and pains and twinges. And you just feel things more, you know, your hands might cramp up or getting out of bed. You're just like, Oh, you're walking a little funny until you get your hips going or, you know, things like that. And that all went away. Like yeah. all of that is gone. So it's just incredible. I love that. That's awesome. So would you guys uh, mind sharing with uh, the viewers, if so, if somebody is, is potentially looking to make a change to their diet, they've heard about the carnivore diet, but they're not sure about it. Um, what, what kind of uh, advice would you give to that person? My advice would be, all you have to do is try it for 30 days. E I, within two weeks, I felt dramatically better. Mm -hmm. um, everyone that I have worked with and have spoke with and the different testimonials that I've heard almost exclusively, I would say within two weeks. Yeah. Um, now, if you are going to try it, do it for real. Mm -hmm. Like 
do it for 30 days and absolutely do it for real. You're, you're a grown up. You're an adult. You can suck it up. You can be strict with it and do it for 30 days. That doesn't mean, you know, I, I, I am very uh, practical, like, and that's why we, we aren't purists in this sense. Like it, I do believe that it makes sense if you are going to do this long term. Uh, in my opinion, you do need to be, there are purest people that can be super strict, but I think you need to have some latitude so that mentally you can maintain it and not yo-yo. Um, mm -hmm. But do it for real, do it for 30 days. And I can almost guarantee you within two weeks, it's going to be so dramatic that you're going to be like, wow, thank you. This was awesome. Right. Absolutely. And I think my advice would be that you don't have to be perfect with it either. You know, you can be as strict as you want to be, um, but you don't have to be perfect. You know, in the beginning, like I said, that first week, we just let the kids finish up the fruit. You know, I enjoyed every single grapefruit, like the sugar just from grapefruit. I would eat five or six grapefruits in a day. Like I was so addicted to sugar that um, just the sweetness of a grapefruit, I, I would just eat all of them. Like I just loved them, you know? Um, but you know, my, I had a, my carnivore friend and she said, um, so it's beef, butter, bacon, eggs. But she said, I added an extra B for like survival blueberries. She was like, get yourself a bag of frozen blueberries. And in those first, you know, month or two months or however long it takes, you know, if you just really, really need something in the evening or something, you know, just get yourself a little scoop of frozen blueberries. And if it's just enough to get you through, you know, um, and those blueberries were like a lifesaver for me in the beginning. And it wasn't that long, you know, it was like, you know, maybe by the second month, we just started to phase them out and me and you stopped. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, you know, crave blueberries anymore or anything like that. My kids, my fro my kids still eat the frozen, you know, fruit, but, um, I, we just don't crave it anymore. It's just, I don't need the sweet anymore. Uh, yeah. And my second recommendation is, okay, so start practicing this now. So everybody you talk to is going to say, uh, in, in a very awkward way, like they, they're like afraid to ask you or something, uh, which somebody just asked me this probably yesterday. Uh, so do you think you're going to eat like this the rest of your life? Okay. First off, nobody thinks about that, like food or even saving money or anything or whatever. But say, I say, I think I'm going to eat like this as long as I find it beneficial to my health. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Great answer. That makes, Great answer. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and along the lines of not being perfect, you know, I mean, it's different. I think if people are hypersensitive, if you find out that you are really, you have a bad reaction to food, if it has peppers in it or something like that. But like, you know, for us, we just, I gave a lot of grace for the kids. Like I said, you know, we had ketchup. Now we're down to sour cream and butter, but it's taken us six months sure. to get yeah, yeah, to yeah. the toppings being sour cream and butter. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I allowed for a clean barbecue sauce. I and that drive for, me, drove me nuts because I'm fanatical, you know, yeah. and I'm like, if you're going to do it. Yeah. You better do it and for I'm real. Like, no, we're going to make this happy <laughs> and enjoyable. Like I'm going to, my one little boy who's uh, eight, he wanted teriyaki sauce at one point. And I was like, you know, I mean, it's got like 30 grams of sugar oh, yeah. in a tablespoon of teriyaki sauce, but you know what, <laughs> if it helps him to eat his meat because he was not a meat kid at all, I don't want him to, you know, start yeah. mentally feeling like, oh, I hate me. And my, yeah, I felt like that as a kid, you know, I don't want him to, I want him to have a good attitude about, he doesn't need a teriyaki sauce. He didn't even nope. finish all the bottles of teriyaki sauce that I bought them. But, um, you know, just little things like that just helped get them through. And it, I know it can help adults too. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to just be gracious with yourself and, you know, you might give up the teriyaki sauce eventually, but if you're doing something and it helps keep you on track, that's better to just be on track than mm -hmm. to say, well, I'm a failure. I can't do it because I, I only know that I can eat beef and salt and water and I can't mentally do that right now. You know, well, eventually you might, or you might never get to that point and that's okay too. You know, it's just, um, yeah. 
being gracious. That was something else that happened that was kind of fascinating. You know, when we started, you know, because we raise cows and pigs and we were eating probably 50% pork and 50% beef. Mm -hmm. And once we started about 30 to 60 days in, I'm like, I don't want the pork anymore. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I want red meat. Yeah. Like I, that I feel best. I feel optimal at that. I still love the bacon and I'll eat the bacon and I'll take the bacon. I'm not going to hate on bacon, but the rest of the pork, I can totally leave. Like I don't right. need that. And I don't want that. But that we do ham sometimes. Yeah, we do. We do ham sometimes to mix it up. But I'll say this too. Like, man, when I used to eat ham, I would gun it. I mean, pounds, but mm -hmm. now it's just like, I'll, I'll eat some, but. We'll usually I, have it with beef, like mm -hmm, have some mm -hmm. beef and have the ham mm -hmm. on the side, you know, yeah. and turkeys and hams right now. I mean, if it's still the holiday season when people are watching this or whatever, stock up on your turkeys and hams because they're like a dollar something a pound. And it's just nice to have some variety sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's your guys' plans for, for Christmas with, uh, you know, navigating that? Well, it's funny because we're having a Christmas dinner at church uh, this Sunday. So I was in the loop with the different ladies, you know, and uh, and we have we have meals, fellowship meals almost every Sunday almost, at church yeah. anyway. Um, so that's been interesting, you know, because there's been interesting. huge spread of food and then a huge table of desserts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every single Sunday, which maybe that's why the cruise wasn't as big of a deal for us because we're used to navigating that right, anyway. Right, yeah. Um, so usually mm -hmm. we just bring meat mm -hmm. that we're okay with eating and share it with everybody else. And, um, and then at least we know there's going to be an option there for us, even if nobody else brings anything that we could eat, there's still going to be something there for us. Uh, so, and you know, we're gracious, you know, if somebody brought chicken or, or different things, and there might be certain seasonings on it, you know, I might give that to my little kids or, or whatever. They're not going to have a reaction to it. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. fine. We can have some wiggle room in that. Um, so, so yeah, we're bringing a ham. We brought a big turkey a couple of weeks ago to church and we bring ice cream. I know it's not perfect. It's not perfect, right. but Dr. Kilt's is ice cream. So we buy whole <laughs> ingredient ice cream. And I don't indulge in ice cream. He know, I mean, 99% of the time he does not have ice cream. Yeah. Um, but my teenagers enjoy having ice cream as a dessert once and in a while. And their skin pays the price. <laughs> and, yeah. And my yeah, same, same ones here. Same like here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love skilled with ice cream, but I, I can't have it, but maybe once or twice a year because my skin, uh, once I found out that dairy was what was causing my adult acne. I'm like, I can't have cheese and yep. all that butter and all that anymore. I just can't do it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So do you, do you supplement with butter or you can't have the butter? Nope. The, what I normally would cook with butter, I cook with tallow. Oh, okay. okay. Because yeah. here's what I did. So, you know, cause we were dairy free and everything. So we went carnivore and then I'm like, I need to up the fat and we, we get really good tallow. I, I really like our tallow, but I was like, I would really like to introduce introduce back butter back in you know it's a couple months in yeah and um so we added butter back in and um i was doing my carnivore coffee with butter tallow and raw eggs you know and mm -hmm. one morning i drank it and i immediately <clears throat> i was like <clears throat> i felt the post nasal drip like immediately and i'm like that's weird because i've been everything's been great and I'm like, it's the same coffee. It's the same. Thing. I'm like, oh, it's the butter. So the butter was kicking in the inflammation response. So I'm like, so I cut the butter back out and immediately everything went back good. And I'm like, oh, I guess I can't have butter. Yeah. And then what I did is I was like, well, let me try carry gold. Let me do the uh, carry gold. And so I reintroduced the carry gold. And right now I'm doing good on that. Right. I haven't had any type of inflammatory response. So, but yeah, I, I had the same exact thing with butter. Um, but when I switched up to carry gold, that's been working for me for, for now, you know, it might not always right. stay that way. Yeah. I, I would say the carry gold it, uh, so in terms of my skin, it didn't really cause that much of an issue. I mean, it's still, I still had some skin issues, uh, and there wasn't any sort of a stall with weight loss or anything like that, eating the carry gold. Cause I did that for the first three, four five months. Um, 
and then just gradually got rid of it to see if, if things would improve. And they actually did. Uh, but mm -hmm. if I ate other brands of butter, uh, definitely skin problems started coming back. And like you said, the inflammation in your uh, sinus cavity and things like that would be more prevalent. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah I can and that's what, that's it. what's so neat about this modality of eating because you can continue to fine tune it and fine tune it and what works for you and what work for you doesn't work for everybody and what works for everybody else doesn't work for you that's what else is neat about it and the community is because you can hear all these different feedbacks and what's working and not working for other yeah. people and you're like hey I'm, I'm gonna, i think i'm gonna try that you know yeah. you don't have to like um visit a medical deity and have some md tell you uh <laughs> you know you know you have you have a uh deficiency in ozempic so you know if <laughs> If you took an Ozempic supplement, you wouldn't be fat anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you need Lipitor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, just in our supplements, we haven't. Oh, I mean, yeah. We are saving wow. a fortune. Just yeah, we're saving several hundred dollars a month. Yeah, in supplements. I mean, because yeah. we have vitamin D. I've always been low on vitamin D my whole life, so I do supplement vitamin D, um, and iodine. And yeah. I, I still have jars of multivitamins in the cabinet, but I don't really think we need them. I'm a, I'm a big iodine guy. Uh, Dr. Brownstein did extensive research and basically he's tied almost exclusively like every major illness to iodine deficiency. And um, yeah, I think people should really look at iodine and what's, what's really neat is you know, I take very high doses of iodine and I don't recommend anything to anybody. Um, but my wife was incredibly sensitive to iodine and cause she had thyroid issues in the past and all these different things. But now that she's carnivore and everything, she's reintroduced the Lugals mm -hmm. and no issues with that. Yeah. And I'm, so it's pretty neat. I'm up at like the highest dose, like according to Dr. Bright, um, or, you know, I know Dr. Barry and Nisha, they talk about iodine a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm up at where I need to be, you know, for my dosage of iodine. So, yeah, nice. I mean, it's, it's awesome. been great. Yeah. 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 We're still figuring it out. Very cool. Well, I thank you guys for sharing your story with me and, and my subscribers. I really feel like, uh, you guys are going to inspire many. And, uh, you know, what's funny is it all started with Carrie and Carrie yeah. now has transformed all your whole entire family and uh, everybody you work with TD <laughs> and uh, he, he kind of has that effect on the world. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah. really cool. So where I mean, can it's... everybody find you? So, so we have a YouTube channel. We're called the Texas boys. And uh, some people think that's weird because the Texas boys are getting older now, but right. our boys started a channel like, I don't know, like seven or eight years they ago the and they were the little and they were the Texas boys. So we're the Texas boys. So you can check us out over on YouTube at the Texas boys. We're on rumble. We're on Twitter and you can always go to the Texas boys.com and check out our website. And we have homestead products there. And me and my oldest son, Matt, we have a podcast called The Fearless Podcast. So we are also on all of your podcatchers. We had a great interview with Sean Baker over there at The Fearless Podcast. We have lots of really cool interviews scheduled coming up. So mm -hmm. if you're into like carnivore or homesteading or intentional living, check out The uh, Fearless Podcast. Yes. I think you'll enjoy it. And they have a great air fryer video coming out too. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun to yep. watch. Yep. Yeah. So if you're interested in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Just be this giant air fryer. <laughs> yeah. nah, it's giant. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks guys. I appreciate your time and we will meet again. Sounds good. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Take care guys. Yeah. All right.